This is Supreme, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. Listen to it if you got the balls. We got a caller here. Uh, who is this? You know what? This is the Triple Threat Superstar Chaos, and I'm listening to the In Your Head radio show right now, and you know what? That's exactly what Vampiro is all about. You see, he, he tells you he's going to do something, and he doesn't do it, and he leaves you hanging right there, one, two, three. You see, how do you guys feel? Do you guys feel good right now that you're being left hanging by, the, by Vampiro? I feel I don't... heartbroken, if I'm honest. He's got the big match with you coming up, you know, this this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think he'll show up for it? Uh, you know what? That's the big question. That they, they took him down near two and a half weeks, maybe even three, to actually even respond to my challenge. And, and, and here we are here tonight, Wednesday, 8 p.m., In Your Head Radio. And, and we're all waiting. I'm waiting right now. You see, this, 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 is, this is how unprofessional that Vampiro is. He tells you he's going to make all these promises to you, and he doesn't come through, and he leaves you hanging at the airport saying, you know what, don't worry about it, Joey. I got your back. Now, is there, is there something that happened between you two? Is, it, is there uh, something we don't know about? You know what? I wish he was on the phone right now. Uh, you know what? Maybe they don't have reception in Guadalajara. Maybe, maybe he doesn't have radio reception living in a trailer park that he knows so much about. You, you see, because like the promise he made about going to big Japan, big hugs, big kisses, saying, you know what? You're my guy. I got your back left and right. And you know what? There I was at the airport with my partner of WSX, Aaron Aguilera, when his flight goes through, his information goes through, and I'm sitting there at LAX, left hanging, calling Vampiro, looking for him, just like you, calling him on the phone, and it's going straight to voicemail. And you know what? That's just not going to fly with me. And I hope he shows up. I've been waiting. I've been waiting all this time. I'm, I'm glad that Saturday's coming up, May 24th, right now, cold day in hell. But you know what? That is the big question. That is the big question. Where is he? Now, do you ever do you ever come into contact with something like this? It's a uh, you know, guy who's done a lot in the wrestling business, and you're a younger guy in the wrestling business. You yourself have done a lot in the wrestling business, too. And, uh, you know, they might have a big head. They uh, you know, might think they're better than you. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Vampiro is is the prime example of of of, of being that uh, that guy with the chip on his shoulder. He's done this, you know. He 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 sits there and gloats about holding victories over Hulk Hogan, holding victories over Sting. You know what? That doesn't matter when he steps in the ring with me because I'm going to give him a little one too. You know, he might know wrestling, he might know Canada, he might know Mexico, but you know what? I know, I know Pathosles one too. Like I said, it's going to be at a XPW Cold Day in Hell. It's this Saturday, uh, May 24th at the Aviation Park, Renando Beach, California. If you want to get your tickets, you go to uh, www.thexpw.com. All right, you know, um, you got the match with uh, Vampiro. And just, just the show itself, or is it something you've looked forward to, like the XPW coming back? Have you, have you missed the XPW? Uh, you know what? I'd, have, I'd be a liar to tell you that, that, that I didn't miss XPW. I mean... Uh, ever since the demise of XPW in, in 2003, uh, I mean, uh, the chaos is searching for a home, you know. I, I've been through, a, uh, through many locker rooms since then, and uh, n nothing has compared and, uh, since XPW. So I think uh, a lot of us are, uh, are gearing up and getting ready, and uh, we're really excited. But you know what? Just like every other XPW show, we all feel that we got something to prove because uh, we have all the naysayers and all the haters out there, and now, you know, uh, XPW and, and Chaos and Supreme were going out there to show everybody what we're all about, and yet de definitely damn we're excited. Now you say you know, like uh, try to pr prove everybody wrong. When, when it folded, did you feel like you know some of the guys that were XPW guys like yourself and Supreme and uh, Al Pogo the Clown, Homeless Jimmy, they all um, White Trash Johnny Webb, like you guys were kind of like uh, blackballed or looked down upon because you you guys were XPW guys. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's how it's been actually since since XPW uh, that that we have been blackballed. You know, we've, we've had all the, the, the uh, because of uh, Heat Wave 2000. You know, we had the balls to actually uh, uh, show up to the pay per view and disrupt uh, ECW's pay per view and everyone's beloved ECW. Um, and 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 they 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 took a, a bad looking at that. And yeah, they did uh, blackball us and put us on the X list. You know. Mm hmm. No. Um, you get the match with Vampiro, and he hasn't called in yet, but uh, do you think maybe he kind of sees you as like a younger version of him? 
uh, you know, like when he where he was at, like at, at uh, you know, when when he was your age. You know, I, 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 you know what? I'd be lying if I told you I didn't look up to Baron Pierre and I didn't admire him. I mean, to be uh, uh, the young Canadian kid that he was from Thunder Bay, Canada, and 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 to have the actual guts to go out to Mexico, you know, not knowing the language and uh, make a name for himself. I mean, telling me stories of living in Hollywood, eating out of dumpsters. I mean, I admire that, you know, to what he did. And um, you know, as far as him uh, um, look, looking at me as a uh, I think he does. I think he looks at me as a uh, as someone that that that's there to take his spot. I, I you know he talks about retiring, but I don't think he's ready to leave the wrestling scene. And I think he he sees chaos as a threat to him. And um, I think that's why he is the way he is um, with uh, a lot of his letdowns, let's say. Mm-hmm. So you know you'd be like the guy that's hungry. You you want like uh, his spot. Would you say that's true? Yeah, absolutely. I mean the man's rock pretty much every company in the world besides WWE, and he's made a damn well living off of it. And, um, I mean, I, you know, it, it's, something, it's something that I think uh, a lot of professional wrestlers strive for. Mm-hmm. Again, that's uh, XPW.com. We had some callers calling in trying to call in for Vampiro. Would you mind if uh, we took some of those guys if they call in? And they can you ask know what? Some Absolutely. Questions? No, I, I got time for In Your Head. Obviously, Vampiro doesn't. <laughs> now, uh... You also on the show you got um you got the return of the of the gangsters which I don't when's the last time that they actually uh you know wrestled together? I believe it's been since over ten years, ten years. You know Mustafa and Jack has had, had some uh you know some uh, been banging heads a little bit had their heat you know and uh, this is going to be the uh, the big uh, reunite you know this is yeah. uh, the big uh, big deal man new Jack and Mustafa coming back for the first time in over ten years. Yeah, that's like that's that's pretty amazing because, like you said, I don't think they uh, they get along very well, you know. Later on, and you know, when when they're tagging us, I think that's why I split them up, and you know, and oh, yeah. them together again. Uh, for, and like you said, ten years, it, and it's not an ECW, it's an XPW. And uh, do you think that was? I asked Terry Funk this last week. Um, you know, when they would actually wrestle with, with the music, because they were like the first guys that do that. You think that was like really innovative? Didn't you do the same thing for a while? Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I heard your Terry Funk interview, you know. I always got time for In Your Head. And uh, the, you know what? That was a great interview, by the way, I like to tell you. That was awesome. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I love the talking to the Funkster. Oh, man, that was an awesome interview. He had me he had me busting up, man. <laughs> He's a great guy. Um, but, yeah, to go back to your question as, as being, yeah, I believe that is very innovative of the gangsters to uh, – you know, wrestle through the whole match with the music on. I think that's what people want to see. You know, they want to see blood, kicking ass, and music, man. I mean, and I think it. it I think New Deck has been delivered since. Um, one of the callers here. We got um, we got Jason on the line. Jason, we we're uh, we're supposed to have Vampiro, but uh, he didn't come through. But we got uh, the rock the rock and roll superstar. We got um, we got Chaos on the line here. Do you have a question for him? I got two. If that's cool. Oh, yeah, man, shoot. Uh, I saw a lot of your old stuff back in the day, like when, in the old XP days, like when it first started and stuff. And I saw a lot of the stuff when you guys came to the East Coast. But, like, what was probably your favorite match throughout XPW history that you work? Like, who was your favorite opponent? Oh, hands down, it's got to be the second-round tournament of the uh, TV title tournament uh, when, I, when I was squaring off against uh, Dynamite B. Uh, may, may his soul rest in peace. And uh, I think we we tore the house down, and uh, I um, that match should have been the the, uh, the match in the finals, you know. But unfortunately, it was second round, and uh, that was definitely one of my favorite matches in XPW and uh, throughout my my wrestling career. Oh, what was your second question? Uh, my second question is because I know him and Supreme are related. How often do you guys hang out outside of the business? Like, are you guys real close outside of the business, or? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, but Supreme and I, we, uh, for the last, uh, 14 years, we've been living, eating, sleeping, sweating, bleeding, uh, the, the, the wrestling business. Um, and pretty much everything that we do is, is, is the wrestling, uh, has to do with the wrestling business. We got the, our, our wrestling school. Um, but pretty much besides that, we hang out at the, uh, the barn burner, um, li- checking out the groovy rednecks, uh, a couple of buddies of ours. <laughs> Well, relations a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit stretched after you burnt his face off. 
Um, you know, pretty much uh, at the time, yeah. You know what? We we really didn't talk to, talk talk a lot, talk to each other. You know, um, when when I left XP or when XPW was 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 demise, I I, I went to uh, to Nashville, Tennessee. Um, he didn't he didn't pretty much like that because I, I I didn't even consult him about it. And um, yeah, I mean from from the burn and 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 from from leaving the state, uh, yeah, he was definitely really bitter at me. Um, but you know, uh, bygones be bygones, and uh, you know we we had a long talk, and uh, you know, family is family. We had uh, GQ Money on Friday when uh, we had a little Friday interview with him, and we talked about that match, and you know, what went through his head when um, what when uh, when he caught when Supreme caught on fire. I mean, and plus you, you still got you still got the pinfall on the guy. He's laying there, he's burned up, and you still you know still had to get the pinfall on the guy and get the title. You know what? Um, I, I think Supreme wouldn't have had it any any other way either if he was in the same position, because um, uh, we do pride ourselves on, on being the utmost professional, and, and and the show must go on, the match must go on. Right. People want to see a finish, you know. Yeah, definitely. Now, who who it was? Uh, was it you made the call to go for the cover, or was, was it? Uh, was he? Did he tell you to you know like you know cover me, finish up this uh, match? Uh, you know what? As I was going down, looking at him, just bloodied, I mean, just burnt up and, 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 and charred up, um, I, I kind of was lost of, of, of what to do. And uh, Supreme, you know, he gives me the Yegi, and he, and he tells me, you got to pin me, you got to pin me. And so, uh, I mean, just laying on him, uh, I felt a little bad, but, um, but uh, you know, we, we had to do what we had to do. And so, I, you know, I gave him the pin for the one, two, three. And, you know, I got to credit him because uh, we, we, we actually uh, tell that story a lot. <laughs> no, um, you mentioned uh, Dynamite D earlier, Mister Eighties Dynamite D. He was uh, that was one of my favorite like uh, guys in uh, XPW. I was telling um, Incher here who didn't see a lot of XPW when it was on originally, but in a lot mm-hmm. of ways, I kind of think uh, Black Machismo. You know, he isn't. He's not even the original Macho Man impersonator in <laughs> wrestling. I think it would be Dynamite D. Oh yeah, I mean uh, Dynamite D was was uh, de- definitely an innovator when it came to that. And, uh, and, uh, you know, just doing all the characters. There was a lot of characters that, uh, that a lot of people didn't see from the shows that we didn't, uh, th- that we actually didn't film. He was, he actually dressed up as the junkyard dog once, um, mm-hmm. if I can remember correctly. And, uh, um, I remember at, uh, at Go Funk Yourself, uh, he had this great idea to, uh, cause in, 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 in true XPW fashion, um, XPW was, 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 uh, was known to, uh, to, to tell the fans, you know, someone's going to be coming in and then screw them over. And uh, so I go funk yourself. He had, the, he had the great idea to tell Rob Black, uh, hey, you know what, let's play Funk's music, let's announce him, and then we'll have Dynamite D come out and just have all, all the fans just uh, shit on us, <laughs> and then we'll just turn it around right there. Uh, but the idea never materialized uh, for whatever reason. I, I think Rob Black just, uh, I don't know, I, I, he, he didn't want to do it. So... Um, um, but I, I thought when, when Dynamite, you know, we'd always talk about it. I thought it was, a, you know, an awesome idea. I think, you know, we should have went through with doing it. I think it, 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 it definitely would have came out perfect and great. Yeah, well, that's one of the things on uh, this Saturday, along with all the other matches, is you got the, the Fallen Heroes of Dynamite D Tribute Battle Royal, which I guess is going yeah. to have a lot of uh, the guys that were trained in XPW. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the guys from the Asylum. Um, you know, there's going to be uh, Joey Dynamite's going to be there, Johnny Nightmare, um, Leroy, the ring crew guy, um, and just so many others um, are definitely going to be there, um, a- along with a couple of other uh, XPW uh, past, uh, like, you know, Phenomenal Phil. Um, so, you know, it, it's definitely going to be a, a, a great tribute, and, uh, you know, so uh, d- definitely looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, uh, just to, you know, let, let, let everybody know, um, you know, my match with Vampiro, you know, come May 24th, XPW, Cold Day in Hell, uh, this Saturday, you know, um, I, I want to officially dedicate that match to, you know, to my fallen brother, Dynamite D. Now, I watched some of your stuff on YouTube, and you've gotten yourself, I mean, you're always in good shape anyway, but looks like you've gotten yourself in, like, tremendous shape for your match with Vampiro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm in the greatest shape of my career right now, you know, just, uh, you know, it's something I cut in the promo, but, you know, I mean, I, I've been in the gym, you know, five days a week. I've been in the ring, you know, especially with the school going on. So, you know, I, I'm definitely tip-top and ready to rock, you know. 
You know, they make you feel like you know you're you're really taking this seriously. Get yourself in uh, the best shape of your career. And then uh, Vampiro, you know, do you think it's just uh, he thinks he's too much of a star, or you know, do you think he's uh, yeah, that I, seriously? I think it's, uh I think it's, it's it's definitely the opposite. I think he's sitting over there as the uh, the veteran, and, and he's soaking up uh, all his victories throughout uh, his career, and saying, you know, who is this chump? You know, this young punk. You know, who is he? And uh, you know, he's he, he's probably telling himself, you know, I've wrestled, you know, bigger, badder monsters than this guy, Chaos, and I don't even need to train or eat my vitamins or drink my milk or you know watch my film. And he's just gonna waltz in probably five minutes before the match goes. And, uh, we're, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be there Saturday to, uh, to show them differently. To actually, you know, the, the, the word of the, uh, the week this week for Vampiro is I'm going to punish him. That's what I'm going to do come this Saturday. Well, uh, we'll pro- we might be in your corner for that match, uh, you know, rooting you on if, uh, if Vampiro doesn't show up here. But yeah, this is actually this is ridiculous, you know. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, I, I just wanted to call in, you know, just to kind of vent my frustration to you to let you know, you know, I didn't want to call in to, uh, you know, to Pearl Harbor your show and try to take over. Oh. I just actually just wanted to let you know, you know, how do you guys feel? Because that's how I feel. Just oh, we pre- yeah, we appro- yeah, we appreciate you calling in. In yeah. a way, it's yeah. kind of. I mean, he didn't know show Brian Alvarez. <laughs> yeah, you see. Exactly, and, and uh, that's how I look at it. He didn't uh, he didn't leave Aaron Aguilera hanging, but he left Joey Munoz hanging. And you know what? That's okay. That's cool. I'm not asking for any handouts, but you know what? I'm gonna punish him. Come Saturday, XPW, cold day in hell. Jason, did you have anything else? You're still on there. So I know you're a big XPW fan. I, I actually am. I, I'm, I was an ECW fan. Was not afraid to admit that I liked XPW back in the day. But I just wanted to say mm-hmm. that. To KS, I thought his stuff with Chris Hamrick was really underrated. And it was probably some of the best stuff I've seen. Uh, that's but just one you. of the, the most thank underrated wrestlers ever, too, is uh, Chris Hamrick. Yeah, he's, he's just awesome, man. You know, he doesn't get the credit he deserves. You know, and he doesn't get the, uh, you know, he, he doesn't get the exposure that, that he deserves. And, uh, you know, he's definitely, you know, he, 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 knows, he knows the business, you know, like the back of his hand. He knows what's going on. He knows how to pop a crowd. You know, he, you want to go toe to toe with Curtis Hammock, he'll go hold to hold with you. You know, if you want to do lucha comedy, you know, he'll knock that one out, grand slam out of the ballpark. It, and when, when you're in, so, in the ring with somebody like that, someone who's been around for so long, uh, do, you just you just learn from them. Do you pick up a lot of stuff? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I actually learned that from uh, Shane Douglas, and uh, he, you know, when he came to XPW, you know, it was, we, we, a lot of the guys were very fortunate to get that experience from guys like Shane Douglas, and uh, you know, he, he let it, he let but let us know, you know, if a guy's been in the business, you know, one day longer than you, then that, that's the veteran, you know, you just kind of pay attention, and you know, it, it, it just kind of comes together. I'd be pretty asinine to kind of go in there and tell Chris Hamrick what to do as opposed to, you know, I see myself as a sponge and, and, and I'll soak up as much knowledge as, uh, as I can. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, we also got uh, Brian on the line. Oh, hi. Is this Chaos? Yep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, now, just to clarify, you're not the Chaos that was in high voltage in WCW back in the late 90s, were you? Or was that the different no, <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> no, I believe that guy's name was uh, Kenny Chaos. I remember that. I remember... Uh, I oh, remember people ever getting you mixed up or what's no, that? No, no, no. You didn't. You couldn't oh, get yeah, that. The, the other question I had was oh the, the the other question I had was um I know that your your name is Chaos. Have you ever seen the film that was directed by a pro wrestler slash bad director called Chaos or heard you of know it? What? I, I haven't I haven't had the chance to see it, but yes, I definitely heard of it. I've seen the trailers. I've been in contact. Uh, with uh, David Del Falco, and um, yeah, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of eagerly anticipating to uh, watch it. I've heard the reviews from uh, from uh, who is his name from Cisco and Ebert or Ebert and Robert, one of those right. guys. Um, yeah, they they really uh, they really tore tore the new asshole, and uh, you know, excuse my language, but uh, um, I'm just kind of you know, I'm kind of jazzed to see it. I want to see what it's all about. You know, uh, the director. Yeah, I mean, any uh, movie that's that bad, I want to see out of curiosity. I just wondered, since you know the coincidence of your name and it was directed by a wrestler, I thought I didn't know if you had seen it or not. But uh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Speaking of Ebert and Roper the movies, didn't uh, Vampiro just put out a movie recently? Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, called The Dead Sleep Easy. 
<laughs> but then, a, a, another premiere that he failed to show up to. I mean, you know what? And that just, you know, he wants to make excuses and, and say someone called in and cut his flight. I mean, come on. He's, he'd have to be a greenhorn, to, you know, to fall for that one. And, uh, but yeah, you know what? He had the Dead Sleep Easy. Um, I was actually in it with Aaron Aguilera, Luke Hawks of XPW. And, uh, you know, it was a great time in Guadalajara, Mexico, you know. And we, yeah. we had the chance to uh, screen it in, in Hollywood, you know, so that was awesome. Uh, how did he treat you on, on the set of that movie? Was there any bad blood between you two? No, you know what, uh, during that time, you know, I, I it was more so real quick in and out, uh, you know, Vampiro acting like he's a big bad star. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I didn't take much thinking of it. And then uh, pretty much after that, um, yeah, we pretty much uh, went our own ways to say. Mm -hmm. Maybe looking back at it now, you could see, uh, you know, just uh, maybe just didn't have respect for you, respect for the, uh, you know, the the, um, the smaller guys on the on the uh, on the film, on the set. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely not, you know. So you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna um, punish some respect into him this Saturday at XPW, <laughs> Cold Day in Hell. Cold Day in Hell. It's Aviation Park, Redondo Beach. Now, in California, you go to the XPW.com. There's a link right on our website. Now, not only the, the wrestling show, but beforehand, there's also uh, like a fan fest where you can meet and meet the wrestlers, get your uh, pictures taken, get your autographs. Are you going to be part of that? Yeah, yeah, I definitely will. I mean, you know, for all the fans out there, I wouldn't count on Vampiro being there. Maybe you'll be able to get an autograph when he's leaving the building. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe he will show up. You know, maybe I'm giving the guy too much of a hard time. But we'll see. You know, maybe he'll call in. Right? Right. You never. I mean, maybe maybe he's got time mixed up. He's uh, Mexico, or you know, maybe he's got. Uh, I know Barbie earlier said maybe he's got some Amasitas around him. Yeah, he maybe. Time. Or you know what? Sir maybe races. he's training for the match. Maybe just. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'd hope so. I would hope so. Because uh, he hasn't wrestled in like uh, two years, I think. Yeah, it's been a damn long time. It's been a damn long time, and. Uh, you know, I, I, um, I, I feel I feel very disrespected that he feels that he's just going to waltz in um, after a, 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 a three years of being rusty and not in the ring, and, and he's just going to put me on my back. And uh, you know, that's just not the way it's going to go down. Earlier, you, uh, you brought up Rob Black. Um, did you get along with him? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Got along with with uh, with Rob Black. I never, uh, you know. I never had any real problem with him, and uh, you know I, I kind of credited him for uh, for you know giving me giving me a great opportunity. You know yeah. a lot of people shit on him, but uh, you know if it wasn't for Rob Black, then there wouldn't be Cold Day in Hell, and uh, you know um, I think you know maybe some of the wrestlers wouldn't have had some of the exposure that that we've had. Now, if Cold Day in Hell, if it does well, do you, do you think um, like the plans would be to do another one or possibly bring back XPW? Well, you know, I, um, I think right now a lot of the focus is just on this one show. Right, but, make, I mean, make sure yeah, it's um, it can be. Yeah, I mean, but obviously, of course, um, I mean, if, if 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 they're turning heads away and they 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 oh they they oversell pre-sell on the DVDs and it is awesome um, and it's a great success. I mean, I think that they would be asking I not to to actually bring it back again, but. Um, I mean, right now we're only promised this one show, so you know, um, you know, it's kind of like WSX. A lot of us were looking already to second season, and you know, just being a a, a season wrestler, you know, um, I'm just looking right now to this show and and, and to the re to the release of the DVD, and then we'll, we'll just kind of take it from there. You know, mm -hmm. we're not promised tomorrow. Yeah. Well, the, the whole thing with uh, Wrestling Society X was that like a big blow to you? Did you really think it was going to take off? Um, you know, I, I think a, a, a lot of us uh, did, yeah. I, I, I really did think it was going to take off, you know. I thought it was uh, maybe the uh, the big break that everyone talks about. And, um, you know, um, I, I think it was a great, great product. I think the wrestling was there. I think there was a little bit of uh, silliness with some of the, uh, you know, special effects. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that could have been fixed. Uh, but, you know, MTV really just didn't get behind the product and, uh, at all, you know, not even from the beginning. And um, you know it was just already doomed to fail. So and 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 it, and it proved to you know we, we we barely got through uh I don't know four four episodes and yeah. then uh, it kind of got shit canned. So 
I mean, yeah, you know, um, it, it's definitely a big disappointment. Um, and, uh, you know, we just kind of take it for what it's worth. You know, it's just, uh, it, it was, it was a, a, a great different experience than, than wrestling, uh, you know, whether it's on the indies or, or whatnot, uh, just because it was a, a Hollywood set and we filmed everything. You know, it, it was a great uh, seven days, you know. Yeah, people always talk about, you know, uh, like a, if you have a new wrestling, you shouldn't try to be like WWE, you should really be the alternative. And I, I thought, you know, Wrestling Society X definitely did that. It was, you know, something something completely different than you uh, than you saw, like, in any other wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it definitely had a different vibe. I mean, just the, even the way it was filmed, um, you know, um, just like the, the turnbuckles were, were, were redded uh, towels and... Uh, right. I, I just think that, uh, yeah, it had a really good uh, uh, fight club feel to it. And, uh, you know, I, I think it just, was, it just was never given the uh, the proper advertising, you know, the proper promoting that mm-hmm. any any wrestling show needs, you know. What was You said, um, you know, because the whole show, the whole season was taped at once. Was that a little frustrating because, um, you know, some things you saw in the show maybe you'd like to change or if you saw feedback from people that they something they didn't like? that you couldn't, like, change to the next week because it was all taped? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, 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 and the schedule was, uh, was, was, was pretty different. I mean, we were wrestling about 10 in the morning on, on Tuesday morning um, right there on Gower Street in Hollywood. And, you know, there was some great wrestling, you know, at, at an odd time of the day. And, you know, we, we, we were doing through, uh, episodes through shifts and, you know, filming vignettes the next day and it was a it, it was a crazy schedule to kind of keep up with you know uh we got us uh, el santo here on the line what's up rock superstar what's going what on el santo que pasa? look i want to ask you a question you ever uh i don't know if you have uh, have you had a chance you know because you're not that far from mexico over there to have a chance you know maybe wrestle over there in triple a or maybe a cmml um, actually, I've, I've never wrestled CMML, AAA, but I, I do frequent, uh, uh, Nueva Generation Extreme NGX, um, uh, which I hold the, uh, tag team title with, uh, with Supreme, um, down there. It's a, okay. it's a company kind of based off of ECW and XPW, and they're bringing the, uh, the hardcore style, uh, the Extreme brand to, uh, to Mexico. You know, it's like Conan says, uh, Mexico is pretty much 10 years behind the United States when it comes to wrestling. And and it's kind of proven if you're watching AAA now, you've seen a lot more tables. They got they got Extreme Tiger on there and uh, and Joe Leader, um, a, a lot of those guys that are into the uh, the deathmatch type of wrestling. And uh, you know it's it's kind of you know this is 1998. ECW was was popping right now. You know, right, right. That's also with Crazy Boy, also right. I think he's yeah, a big group. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I had tell you what, man. I enjoyed your matches when you was in XPW. Bro, right, they were great, bro. I love your entrance, man. Your intro, Thanks. man, when you came in in the ring, man, it was great. All right, thank all you right, man. Well, thank you so it. much. All, all right, right man. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Santo. Adios. Now, um, you know, after your match with Saturday with Vampiro, and you're wrestling, you know, in XPW. Uh, could you possibly see you, you know, following him down to Mexico and fight and uh, you know fight to him on his turf? Um, you know, I, 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 I just don't see that happening because I, I, I don't see Vampiro, you know, stepping in the ring again. You know, I, I, I see that even win, lose, or draw in his mind that that he's looking to uh, to hang up his boots. Um, so I, I think this is you know pretty much one of the last times we're going to see Vampiro. Um, and, and, and just like I've been telling you guys, you know, it's going to be punishment central come Saturday and, uh, chaos is going to be dishing out the punishment. Now, if it's win, lose, or draw, it's his last time. You think you'll want to go out there and really want to showcase himself, like go out in like a, a big, uh, you know, just oh, yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, as a matter of fact, he's probably thinking this is the, the, the Vampiro farewell show. Right. That- <laughs> Yeah, I definitely believe that he's going to go out there and try to showcase his talent, um, you know. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to see, we're, you know, we might see a different type of match. You know, it's going to be a fight, you know. Just like he said, he's not coming to wrestle. Well, you know what? Neither am I. We're going to fight, and I'm going to punish him. Have you seen that, uh, I believe he's joined the Guardian Angels in uh, Mexico? 
Oh, you know, he's doing a lot of a lot of different. Uh, I think he joined the Black Label Society. He's joined the. Uh, I, you know, I think he was a guardian angel in mm-hmm. in, in, in in Hollywood uh, uh, back in the day, about twenty years ago. Um, I remember we used to laugh at those guys because they thought they were the authority type. Uh, but that's just but that's just uh, what Vampiro, how he is. You know, just how he he controls himself. You know, he's hiding. Um, you know, just always trying to hide behind something. That's mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons why I puts the face paint on, and it's just another something you know that he can uh, kind of hide behind and stand behind, and you know make make himself feel part of something. No, mm-hmm. now chaos. How many green? I uh, mean, uh, guardian angels can you uh, eat for breakfast? How many can I eat for breakfast? You know, I, I don't know. Is that a trick question? <laughs> I hope I hope it works out better for him than it did for uh, Ray Trailer. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, I do. I do, too. You know, I wish Vampiro the best. I have no hard feelings for him. I'm, just, I'm going to be as professional as I can, and I'm going to bring everything, all my anger, all my animosity, and I'm going to bring it in the ring Saturday in XPW. Uh, I'll get another caller here on the line. Who is this? Hey, this is uh, Cronus in the chat room. Oh, how you doing? Yeah, um, doing good. Uh, I just wanted to tell Chaos, I think he's amazing from what I've seen, and XPW and Wrestling Society X. <clears throat> and uh, I also want to ask, what, what was it like to work with and around uh, John Cronus in XPW? You know, John Cronus was one of the best guys in the, in the locker room in XPW. Um, you know, he was one of those guys that kind of came in and uh you know didn't 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 uh treat treat the rest of the boys like uh you know I'm this big star coming in and you guys are a bunch of nobody indie wrestlers um you know he kind of came in and, and and embraced us in a way and you know I, I became you know really good friends with uh with Cronus you know and had the opportunity to to wrestle him in a tag match um in XPW and um you know, just wrestling with him, you know, he was all about, you know, I, I want you to do this move. I want you to do this. You know, I want you to do that. You know, and I really want you to bring the fight to me. And, uh, you know, um, it, it, it was, it was, a, it was a real honor, you know, for, 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 for John Cronus to actually, you know, come to me, you know, and, 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 you know, I'm not, uh, at the time I wasn't holding myself as anything. You know, I'm looking up to this guy like, you know, this is, man, one of the baddest tag teams in the world, the Eliminators. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 he he's he's taking the time to actually you know teach me something, and you know I I definitely appreciate it, and uh, yeah, you know rest his soul, you know rest in peace, John Cronus. Yeah, for for a big guy, uh, well for actually any size, but especially for a big guy, the moves he could do is just you know tremendous. It's just awesome. Yeah, just amazing. I mean, just amazing. Just that. Uh, I mean, I remember in, in ECW he did that uh, that flip uh, where where Saturn, you know, would give him a little caboose, you know, to the outside, the moonsault, and you know, just you know, for a big guy, and he would do it with ease and, and no problem, and uh, you know, just he was awesome. Mm-hmm. That's definitely a team I wish would have you know been around longer as a team, because just just to watch those guys wrestle, it was uh, it just uh, like breathtaking, just the uh, double team no. moves, and just amazing, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, 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 and you know, as well, watching ECW, I would sit there and be like, well, why is the big guy doing all the high-flying moves? You know, I, I just didn't understand it. I thought it was awesome. And the uh, double elimination, just uh, total elimination, just the, yeah, total one elimination. of the best finishers ever. Yeah, definitely, you know, definitely. Uh, Do you have another question? Uh, no, that's it, and thanks to Chaos for answering it. Yeah, thanks for calling in. And, uh, All right, thank you. Uh, just so you know, because uh, he's in the chat room, there's a lot of people in the chat room, and they're all saying uh, Van is going to have a hard time following this guy if he calls in. Oh, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to hang on the line. I'm trying to, you know, maybe hope that uh, that maybe Van does have the balls to call in. Maybe he's listening right now, and and and, and he just doesn't know what to say. Maybe he's a little tongue tied, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he, like you said, he might think, uh, you know, this this is going to be my last match at uh, XPW Cold Day in Hell. I'm going to go out there and, uh, you know, just beat this young guy and show off what I can do and ride off in the sunset. But, you know, it might be now he's listening to you and he realizes he might be in over his head. This is, you know, somebody's hungry, you know, a young guy who can do a lot of stuff and he can tell, like, you got a fire in you. 
then he might be uh, double thinking everything. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I, I, I hope it. I hope it doesn't scare him off. You know, I hope he at least shows up. You know, and and and, and gives me an opportunity uh, to, you know, to show the fans to maybe put him on his back. You know, because you know maybe maybe in XPW fashion, um, I'm still waiting for my rematch with Sean No Show Waltman. So you know, I, I have a little bit of experience with the guys not showing up. You know, maybe for one reason or another. I don't know. Maybe I put the fear into them. Now, uh, Wrestling Society X, and you're talking, you're tagging with uh, Aguilera. Uh, what did you think yeah. of that team? And uh, do you guys still ever uh, tag anywhere? Um, yeah, yeah. We actually uh, we we did a lot of tag teaming. I think it was one of the first tag teams that uh, that Kevin Kleinrock had in mind because uh, we had the opportunity to go down to uh, Guadalajara, Mexico, and wrestle with uh, RXLL um, on, on a handful of times. Um, to actually uh, get ready for the uh, the MTV show, and uh, I think we came up with a lot of great moves. You know, you know the guy's a the guy's a, a seven foot giant man, and, uh, and and he can move, he can do springboards. You know, um, and and you know you got me, and uh, I, I can fly. And I, I think that I think the tag team worked out well. I personally, I, I would have I would have liked to maybe uh, done a, done something on, on a singles. Uh, on, on the singles path, but uh, right. you know, it turned out that it was the uh, the tag team, so we kind of went with it. I think it worked out well. Yeah, I think maybe like down the road, you guys could have actually maybe had a feud, or uh, you know, you, you don't know what like uh, you know like where you, that team was going to lead, like uh, who you guys were going to feud with or anything. Um, you know, there, there was there was a lot of talk for 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 this for the the, uh, the second season. Um, and then I, I think uh, something was written. I think there was a li- at least four seasons written already. Um, and I think that there was. Uh, I think we did lead down to maybe some of the seasons down that we would finally get our get, get into a fight. But I think they were going to try to elongate it for a little while. I, I, you know, I'm not too sure. We never got that far, so you know, that's history. Yeah, that's another underrated guy that too is Aguilera. And uh, yeah. like we had him on the show last year, and uh, just surprised like how good of a talker he is, because I think in WWE, like, I don't know if he really cut any promos there. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think that's how, I, actually, I, I mean, it, it's unfortunate, you know, the guys had two contracts, uh, you know, and uh, I think that's what, what got him called up the first time he told me a story. Uh, Vince McMahon came in, and, uh, you know, everyone had to line up and cut promos, and uh, that's what Aaron Ag- Aguilera did, you know, the man's got a lot to say, you know, he's very intimidating, he's, you know, he's a big guy, and he's got he's got he's got a bigger mouth, and uh, you know he, you know he probably cut that promo to Vince McMahon. And, you know that's what got him called up. You know, just unfortunately he had his injury with his neck, mm-hmm. and uh, you know so he's still on the grind. You know, and you know like a lot of us, and uh, you know just trying to just trying to uh, leave our mark in the uh, professional wrestling industry. You know, and he definitely has uh, some nice suspenders too. I have to say. Oh, oh yeah, his suspend. He I I think he hates those. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I think he wanted me to actually get in the suspenders, and I told him, "No, how about you just bleach your hair and we call it a day?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That could have been a good luck. Suspenders. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Not to wrestle in, though. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it just looked too goofy for me. Oh, uh, we you got. Know, I, you know, he rocked it. Oh yeah. We got. Uh, that's something I always remember. Maybe it's not a good thing. I don't know. But uh, if, if I ever see him, I won't bring it up because he'd probably beat the hell out of me. We got. Uh, we got James Orange Corn on the line. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, thanks. Uh, you got a question for Chaos? Vampira didn't show up, but we got a Chaos here. He no showed. Yep. Oh, hey Chaos, how's it going, man? Um, good. How, how you doing? doing? Pretty good. Um, I can't stand the phone long, but I just wanted to call and say what's up. Um. I was wondering who your favorite superhero is. Oh, wow, a superhero. Um, you know, I, I think I got to go old school. You know, I think there were a lot of people like Batman, you know. Um, I think a lot of people compare me to Superman because I, I wear the thick glasses, you know, when I'm not in the ring. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go with Batman. Awesome. Are you going to see the new movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, who isn't gonna, who isn't anticipating that movie? Hell yeah. Alright, thanks a lot for answering my question. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for calling. Alright. I forgot to tell James to stop sending me those MySpace things where he buy, buys you as a pet. Yeah, I don't those... know if you're into the MySpace. Like, those things are annoying. <laughs> <laughs>
You get those, those people they are always trying to buy his pets on the MySpace. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I don't understand what it is. I just delete it, um, but, uh, you know, teach their own. <laughs> can turn it off, which I find out quite quickly. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah you can. It, I think it tells you how somewhere. Oh, okay. But, uh, forget the MySpace. Go over to the, uh, the XPW.com, find out how to get your tickets. This Saturday, Aviation Park, Redondo Beach, California, XPW, Cold Day in Hell. Like I said earlier, there's a fan fest. That's going to be from 5.30 to 7.30 uh, p.m. Then you got the Miss Extreme contest. Now, are you going to... Uh are you going to be watching that? Are you going to be a judge, or are you going to have any oh, uh, participation? you know what? I I I, I have my uh, I I got, I'm going to have my hands full with Vampiro, but you know damn well I'm going to be watching the Miss Extreme contest. Yeah, well, we asked uh, Terry last week about it, and uh, at first he said he might he might be a participant in it, but I didn't think he realized what it, what was going on there. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think he did. Uh, but I, I definitely, I, I bet you a lot of the boys are going to be backstage watching that. Mm-hmm. Now, earlier when you were talking about um, Chris Hamrick, and you are saying like the different styles he could do where he taught you like some like, some comedy style. Now, did he kind of also teach you, or maybe something you learned from somebody else, to change a style like depending on like what kind of crowd you're in front of? Like maybe if you're doing like a comedy match and it's not working to change it up. Or if you're doing like uh, maybe a hardcore or something and it's not really working with the crowd, maybe throw some comedy in it. Um, you know, I I I I didn't actually have you know have Chris Hamrick you know have have that uh, opportunity with him, um, but you know just uh, um, just being so many years in the business and you know wrestling in uh, in Tijuana compared to wrestling uh, down in Nashville or wrestling up in uh, in Philadelphia. I mean, the, the the fan base is just uh, it's a wide variety, and 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 they're really different, um, um, a, a different core of fans, and uh, you know, you just kind of gotta. Um, I think, I mean, at least with me, uh, it just kind of came over time, and just learning, uh, you know, trial and error. You know, sometimes uh, things would work, and you know, I would give a killer super kick, and the crowd would go crazy, and uh, in my head, I was like, no, I want to finish with something else, and you know. I would when I should have probably just took it home with the uh, with the old super kick one two three and you know so I think you know, you, you 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 go through a lot of experiences like that and you kind of just uh, you know learn what works and what doesn't work and when you got to audible out and uh, you know change things up and you know it, it it's come out and, and a lot of the times nine times out of ten it comes out for the good because um, when you have that emotion coming out of you um, nothing ever really. Uh, um, overstands that really you know you can go over a match and uh but if you have real emotion in a the match then uh i think that one's going to stand out uh, far more by far mm-hmm. uh we got a caller here on the line and we've got the flea yes you do how you doing good good you got a but, question for chaos i do indeed i i wanted to know like with with all the crazy things that they did in xpw and stuff was anything just like too outrageous? Did they did they put the kibosh on like anything at all? Did like um, Supreme want to go through like twenty tables and six thousand light bulbs or anything? <laughs> you know, I, I don't think that they ever really put the kibosh on anything. I really think that they stood up when when they were coming out with those scaffold matches. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think was that they yeah, I think that they would have been effective if they were twenty feet in the air. It didn't have to be forty, forty five feet up there. <laughs> And, you know, and, and, and on top of that, then, you know, you have the exploding scaffold match. And, you know, I think so, some of the things were maybe a little much, um, mm-hmm. but as far as I know, I don't, I never heard of anything getting the, 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 the XNA, you know? Mm-hmm. There was nothing playing with uh, Negro Claws. It was just too over the top. <laughs> that he was going to explode and or something. something. Singing everything. <laughs> I was Those actually ha- great times, though. I loved like uh, all the, all the XPW stuff just blew my mind. That yeah, was a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of... go on. Sorry, there was uh, there was there was a time of uh, I believe like six months between Go Funk Yourself and uh, and it might have been the first New Year's Revolution that, that there was no wrestling show and 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 we, and we kept the live TV show going and 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 a lot of people that didn't get a chance to see that are going to get their chance to see it when the seasons come out, you know being offered by Big Movie Entertainment. And, you know, we just kind of kept the, uh, I think that's what uh, a lot of the Los Angeles fans, you know, became, you know, re- really uh, really connected with XPW because they got the chance to watch the television. Right, right. 
Well, yeah. I, I just want to wish you the best of luck. Uh, you, you were always one of my favorite guys uh, back in those days. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, take care, guys. Thanks for calling in, man. Yep. I probably shouldn't say this, but yeah. back in the day, actually, you had, uh, you know, the whole season, well, the whole series of uh, the XPW on, on VHS tape, and I don't think they were, you know, they were bootlegs, basically. But I was glad that the, uh, you know, you get the DVDs out now because you can actually see them, and uh, it's a lot better quality, and you got some extras on there, get some extra matches. Yeah, 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 you know, I mean, yeah, there was a, I think they did do a release of the, uh, the, the, the TV episodes and they would sell them, uh, every time at the shows. Uh, so yeah, there, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I was, uh, you know, stuck in my head that, you know, XPW was going to be there forever and I, I just never really collected them. You know, I didn't collect a lot of stuff that I probably should have, you know, that's, 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 uh, probably nostalgic right now. You know, there's a lot of calendars, you know. Uh, of XPW, I mean, there was all all sorts of stuff, you know, and and you know, being in the Indies of, of, of in 1999, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the companies, you know, really, you know, a lot, no company was was putting out DVDs, you know, it was rare to have, maybe even have a T-shirt, oh, yeah. um, and you know, you know, coming to XPW is a just a crazy different experience, and uh, you know, and then and then when it ended, you know. Um, you know, a, 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 every indie was, 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 you know, had their t-shirts and, and, and their, their ring skirts and, uh, you know, it was just a whole different ballpark, you know, cause you know, when we were in XPW, we were exclusive and we didn't wrestle a lot of the indies, you know, maybe one, two, you know, a couple mm-hmm. of deals here and there. Um, but yeah, it was like a, a whole new world coming out of XPW and, 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 uh, you know, grinding back into the indies and, and getting back into it. It was, you know, it was a, a big change, you know? Yeah. I'm, I remember seeing the XPW DVDs, you know, at, at stores, and like you say, at that time, you know, now you actually see um, pretty much, like you said, every, every indie, if you go to their website, they're selling DVDs of their shows, but at that time, it was basically like WWE would have not even a lot like they do now, and I, I, that was probably like one of the first uh, wrestling promotions that really took advantage of uh, DVDs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Rob Black had all the access to it. And, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I, I could be mistaken, but I think, uh, I think, uh, I think Rob Black and XPW beat, uh, Vince McMahon on, on DVDs, you know, to the punch. Yeah, they might have. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not <laughs> I sure, think but I think right. it was pretty close. Mm-hmm. I think it was pretty close. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely innovative in, in that fact, you know, and, and Rob Black had all the access to it, and, and it was like no thing, uh, no, no big deal to him to, mm-hmm. to produce DVDs. Yeah, and that's how I discovered it because you know I'm I'm on the East Coast, I'm in uh, Massachusetts, so it's you know all the way on the other side of the country. But you know I saw the DVDs and you, you saw Shane Douglas on there, and so I was like oh I gotta pick that up. And then then you discover all the uh, the XPW guys like yourself and uh, and Johnny Webb, and you know it was like a uh, it was good stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know it, it it definitely was a lot of fun. You know putting the character when you know Rob Black coming up with the characters and the promos and the skits and. <laughs> And, uh, you know, when I first started, man, I, I couldn't, I couldn't cut a promo to save my life. I couldn't, you know, talk in front of the camera to save my life. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I come, I came a long way, you know, with the help of GQ money, you know, that guy's got a mouth on him and, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, there's a lot of guys helped me along the way. So, uh, you know, yeah, I think, yeah, the XPW definitely did help out a lot tremendously. We talked to him Friday, like I brought up, uh, GQ Money. He said that uh, you guys had, like, a falling out, falling out at one time. Do you yeah, think you guys yeah. ever, you know, see eye to eye again? Um, you know, uh, we, 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 we're, we're, we're professional enough to work cordially, like in WSX, like this coming uh, XPW. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we're, we were really close back in the day. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't see that coming back, um, you know, that friendship, that bond. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we really, uh, made them excel, you know, in, in, in that fact, you know, and, and we, we, we made the travel out to Nashville and, uh, you know, we, we kind of, uh, bumped heads, you know, bit heads and, uh, he went his way and I went my way and, uh, that's just how it's been ever since. Uh, what did you think about the group, the Enterprise? You know, that was you and GQ Money and that whole group. Did you, uh, did you, did you like that? Did you think that was, like, you guys had good chemistry together? Um, yeah, I definitely loved it. When, 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 when they first brought it to my attention, I hated it. I didn't want to be part of it. I didn't want anything to do with it. I, I didn't think that it was going to, uh, excel my career. I, you know, I thought maybe I would be lost in the shuffle of the whole group. 
Right. And you know, it 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 you know, it, it couldn't be the, the total opposite, you know, and it, and it uh, you know catapulted me, you know, like, you know my character and my gimmick and and, and whatnot, and uh, you know they kind of gave me the ball to you know to run with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Where did they film a lot of those uh, vignettes? Like uh, like when you guys would be at someone's house, and it was like you and um, you and Supreme would be, would be at uh, like. Um, I guess Supreme's house, and then the guys would come and beat up Supreme and stuff. Like, was that filmed at someone's house? Oh yeah, I mean a lot of the, a lot of the footage was guerrilla footage. Um, you know, uh, we would go to maybe uh, church. A lot of the stuff was filmed. Uh, must have been two, three in the morning. Um, you know, I think a couple of times we filmed in a garage that someone was sleeping at, and uh, I mean, I just think uh, I mean, a lot of the stuff was just, you know, go in, do it, and, and get it done, you know, we would, you know, we would do a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, stop traffic and uh, and whatnot, and we would just kind of go out there and <laughs> film what we needed to film. I know you you weren't a part of it, but I always thought it was a pretty cool vignette. It was, um, it was after um, Supreme's death match, I think, and he was in a wheelchair, and the uh, and uh, Messiah pulled up in the car, and like he just kind of looked. At, it was in the, he was stuck in the headlights, and he just like went, "Oh shit!" And they came out, and they're fighting in the middle of the street. I don't know if you remember that or not. Yeah, yeah. They, I think that was. Uh, I think that was based off of uh, Pulp Fiction. I think a lot of right. us were trying to make a, a, a lot of uh, movie scenes and just trying to have a lot of fun with it. And uh, you know that that's just kind of what we did. Now, did Did you come up with any like ideas yourself, or was it mostly like uh, you know what someone else thought of? Um, you know what? I remember. Uh, I remember. You know, GQ and I would would sit there hours among hours and uh, and and come up with a lot of ideas. I mean, he had a lot of kooky ideas. He had a lot of great ideas. You know, I had a lot of great ideas. And you know, at the same time, we both had a lot of stupid ideas. Uh, but I mean, that's how a, a lot of the uh, the uh, you know the Enterprise TV came about. Um, and you know, just trying to uh, just trying to push the envelope, and just trying to do maybe something a little bit different. Um, definitely, really based off of uh, you know a lot of our TV uh, uh, experience with the Enterprise was definitely based off of DX and uh, and, and the NWO. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, it was just a lot of fun. You know, it was uh, it was a great time. You know, it was, we just I think that we all clicked with uh, Veronica came. You know. Uh, that was the manager and GQ Money, the agent of the stars and, 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 and the rock superstar chaos. And I think we just kind of, uh, made that whole, uh, TV title reign our own, you know, because, you know, I give them all the credit too of, of, of that television title belt because we kind of took it, you know, from kid chaos with the black hair and the, and the long tights and, and made this rock superstar, uh, chaos. And, and I, you know, I think it was great. And I think it was, um, you know, I think it was a great, uh, that we that 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 it is on film, you know, to watch, and you can see mm-hmm. it on the best of the Enterprise and stuff like that. Uh, whose idea was to feed or actually wrestle with the title on? Oh, definitely Rob Black's Rob Black's idea. Um, that that was his idea that I said I just never took the belt off, whether it was promos or shower. <laughs> and I think we had a couple ideas to do promos in the shower, and I would have the belt on. And um, I think uh, I, I think a lot of the guys that I wrestled were unfortunate that I wrestled the belt on because I think I blasted a lot of them. I remember Chris Hamrick um, getting smashed in the face with the belt. I think even Danny Doring did on a couple of moon salts. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was really no thing to wrestle with the belt on. Um, I think um, you know uh, it was a lot of fun and, and uh, it, it was definitely uh, innovative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was actually I always thought maybe it would hurt you uh, wrestling with the. T- I never thought about it like. Other guys like uh, bang, you know, banging their knee or banging their head on it. I thought maybe it would hurt oh, to yeah. see it, like bending over and doing anything like that, but it, it, you didn't really, uh, it didn't bother you. Oh no, not at all. I, I think uh, maybe a couple of times, um, you know, blowing up in a match. I think uh, at the end of the match, just take this belt off because it would it would definitely restrict my breathing. Um, but that's just something that I kind of had to go through to uh, to kind of get that look. And you know, I'm glad I kind of did. I, I definitely did do it because a lot of people bring that up uh, about me wrestling with the belt. I kind of don't think anything of it because it really didn't bother me uh, to have the belt on. I think maybe I definitely was proud to hold that television title. Yeah, I liked it because, uh, like you said, a lot of people, um, especially at the time, and I guess some guys are starting to wear the title again. But for a long time. Everyone just put it over their shoulder, or they carried it, or they'd wear it around their head, and like no one was really, yeah. you know, having the belt around their waist. And then 
here you come and you have it around your waist, and not only just when you come to the ring, but at all times. Oh yeah, and then and then we we always goop with the referee. He tried to take the belt, and I'd pull it, you know, because he'd have to hold the belt up for the title match, and you know, put it back on. And uh, I think I, I think people would, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I, you know, re- wrestling uh, with with uh, in in the Indies while I was in XPW. Um, I think a lot of the guys, you know, didn't understand it because they would they would always take it off me, you know, always take the belt off me, and I would just go back and grab it and put it back on. I think there was only one move in XPW that I couldn't do with the belt on, and that was the uh, the 450 splash. And so I, I actually had to take it off for that. Yeah. And then I put it right back on. All right. Well, everybody, go, everybody get in and check out the XPW.com, XPW, Cold Day in Hell. I think the, a lot of, like, the I think like the front row seats are sold out, but you can still get, uh, like, uh, general admission seats and... You know, plus you want to be there for the Fan Fest and uh, the Miss Extreme Contest and to see the show, because it might be the last time you get to see all these guys, you know, together on one show. Or yeah, if it does yeah, go definitely. on, you'll be there for, you know, like the, the rebirth. You'll be there for the beginning. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? Hopefully uh, hopefully uh, XPW does it right and, and, and doesn't uh, do what uh, Vince McMahon did to ECW. You oh, know, yeah. and uh, and yeah, I, I mean that's what I've been telling a lot of people. I think uh, Vince McMahon put that uh, that brand out there for everyone to see extreme wrestling, and and he didn't deliver. And I think a lot of people are looking for XPW maybe to fill that void for their uh, their extreme wrestling uh, brand that they're looking for that they want to see. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's definitely like a you know a spot open for like a you know another wrestling copy like a something alternative for people to to watch who don't like. Might not like the WWE brand of wrestling. Um, yeah, I, I think I think definitely the sky's the limit when it comes to that. Um, I think um, a lot of promoters promote great shows, um, or, or they book great shows, but um, they, when it comes to promoting it, um, I think they leave it maybe to the internet or to maybe their students passing out flyers. But I think they need to take it the extra step. And, 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 you know, either whether it's getting sponsors and, you know, and doing the hard work and, and doing the footwork. And, you know, if that means that, that you're going to lose money at the show, then, you know, that's what you got to do. And you can't take it out of the wrestler's pocket, you know. And, mm-hmm. and I think that that's just the sad state of, of, of independent wrestling nowadays. That, you know, a lot of guys are, are doing that. You know, it, it seems to be getting better um, with Dave Marquez doing the NWA shows, you know, giving a lot of guys, um, you know, good, a good payday, good crowd to wrestle in front of. Um, so you know, just hope you know that there's that there's more guys out there too that uh that are gonna try to actually you know bring up uh, independent wrestling and uh, and not just you know just be like those these unscrupulous promoters that are you know just trying to uh, maybe pay pay some bills and, and and stiff wrestlers and you know that's just uh, that's just a sad state you know yeah yeah after um after XPW did you did you uh, did you find a lot of that like um you know guys you just couldn't trust or they would stiff you on paydays. Um, you know what? I, it just uh, being in, in, in the wrestling, I, I always go by Stone Cold Steve Austin's GTA, right. and, and I really don't trust anybody. Um, and it's uh, you know, you, you know, there's, there's some guys that, that are definitely reputable, um, but a lot of the times, you know, you got to treat it like a business. And and I think when when you come at it in, in that angle, and and and, and you get your uh, you know half your guarantee up front and. Uh, you know, just it just shows people that hey, you know what? I'm not going to get I'm not going to get screwed with. Um, and I, I think a lot of uh, a lot of uh, independent wrestlers need to stand up for themselves and not let the promoter uh, you know do do a lot of the things that they do um, because you know a lot of guys are going to make a lot of promises. It is funny that we come full circle because yeah, here we are. A lot of a lot of promoters will make a lot of promises and uh, you know, and, and a lot of guys will will kill their bodies for the for these promoters and, and nothing really comes out of it and. You know, you know, um, they need to, uh, you know, put a little bit of hard work in, uh, in, in, into their craft, you know, and I think it just comes with the promoting, and mm-hmm. especially in Los Angeles, because there is no wrestling, independent wrestling on TV, like there is pretty much in, 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 in a lot of the other uh, cities in, in the country. Um, what well, I said earlier about maybe if you don't like WWE wrestling, you know, another wrestling, but if you like WWE wrestling, there's things you're not going to see, and there's not there's not room for everybody in WWE you know, if you want to see guys maybe that aren't, you know, six four and and all, all muscles, you know, you might you want to see guys flying around. You know, even the smaller guys in WWE usually don't see those kind of matches where they're flying around. The cruiserweights are usually doing like a WWE style match. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it's unfortunate, you know, but, you know, Vince is, is, is got his guy, he knows what he's looking for, so, mm-hmm. you know, when he gets a lot of these guys, he does tame them down because he's he's he's, he's got a, a specific thing in mind that he's looking for and he knows what he's, he's, he's going after. Right. And so, yeah, a lot of the times, a lot of the, you know, guys that get called up, they they they, they don't get the, uh, the chance to showcase their moves, and, you know, sometimes they have, you know, 30 seconds to put themselves over, and that's it, you know, and... You know, some some guys do it, and, you know, some guys click, and unfortunately some guys, it, you know, it just doesn't work out that way, you know? Right. And, and if you, uh, for whatever reason, don't, you know, don't get along with Vince McMahon or, or someone in WWE, there's not really any place else you can go where you, you know, it's like a big TV product, maybe TNA, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, so I, I definitely, like you know, to answer that question of yours, yeah, I think there is a, a great big opening for a company to, uh, to come in and, and you know state their claim as, as maybe the third company you know in, in wrestling, um, you know because you know the old saying is wrestling goes in, in you know in seven year rounds, and I think you know we're pretty much due we're pretty much due for something to you know to pop up and you know TNA's do, you know doing their thing over there you know just you know just uh, I mean uh, on the level of the WWE they're still just you know doing maybe one show every two weeks or you know doing the TV tapings once every two weeks. Or once every week, and you know, so it's it's it you know as competition to to, to the Fed, you know, it, it's tough to say, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, again, that's uh, the XPW dot com. Anything you want to tell everybody, like you know, why they should go to uh, the Cold Day in Hell? Oh, you know, they definitely can't miss out because yeah, it is being built. You know, one chance, you know, one shot, one night only. You know, a lot of people have it in their head that you know it's gonna be, you know it, it's gonna come back, you know, again. And, you know, it, they shouldn't. they got to show up. You know, they got to buy the DVD, you know, because this could be the last chance they're going to see Extreme Wrestling, XPW. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of great guys on on this show. You know, we got uh, we got the Clash of the Death match, you know, Supreme versus Necro Butcher. Um, and then, yeah, you definitely got Vampiro versus Chaos. It's going it, to, and then that's the punishment match. You going to get in a, a good shot for us? Oh yeah, definitely. Just for you, just for oh, you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Definitely that. for in, you know what? Yeah, for 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 in in your head. <laughs> Sorry about the commando uh, reference earlier. <laughs> oh, you know, no big deal. Um, well, let's go to break here. There's a possibility we might be getting someone here in the line, um, and then we'll, we'll come back. I'm in there. I'm in there. I'm in your head. That's right. GQ Money is in your head, and there is nothing you could do about it except tune in and listen. All right, we're back, and we're still joined by Chaos here with us. Yes, definitely, definitely. I'm here in your head, you know. I mean, we're still here. We're waiting on uh, No Show Vampiro. It, it, it's, big, it's, it's a big concern to me because is he going to show up to the match or is he afraid that I'm going to punish him come Saturday night, May 24th, XPW's Cold Day in Hell? Now, if, if he does show up, like, what do you have in store for him? You said you're going to punish him, but, uh, like, what specifically do you have in store for the guy? Oh, you know what? I I can't let the cat out the bag. You know, you just gotta you just gotta see. You know, that, that's why I'm telling you the word of the week is punishment, and that's what I'm gonna do to Vampiro. You know, you know he says he's not coming to wrestle, and that's what I'm telling you. I'm not coming to wrestle either. I'm coming to bring a fight, and I'm coming to punish him, and I'm gonna beat some respect into him. Now, do you think he just doesn't respect like uh, us, or he doesn't respect you, or? He just thinks he's a big star, so he, you know he just doesn't bother about showing up. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, like I like I was telling you, he's got this big chip on his shoulder. You know, he 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 claims to be the man that holds the victories over the big Sting and the big Hulk Hogan, and, and he's looking at chaos and saying, "Who's this punk? Who's this chump?" You know. And, uh, you know, I'm not taking any kind of liking to that, you know, and, 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 and just like he's leaving you hanging here on your radio show, you know, that's how he left me hanging at the airport. And you know what? That's not going to fly with me, you know, but that's okay. That's all right, you know, because may, come May 24th, this Saturday, I'm going to get my chance to step in the ring with Vampiro, you know. We're going to get a chance to butt heads, you know, and I'm going to show him what chaos is all about because when he's laying on his back, Advertising the fact that his ass just got chaosified, and it goes for the one, two, three, then he'll know. Simply put, I am simply the best. I am the mega media crossover sensation, the man god, the triple threat superstar that they call 
chaos. Now, what kind I don't of think thing? Shapiro knows. I don't think he knows. I don't think he, you know, he's got it in him. You know, just like I told him before, you know, you know, he's pissed off at me. Well, you know what? I piss on you. I piss on his career. I piss on everything that he stands for. You see, that's that's my emotion coming out, and I'm going to bring all my emotion, all my anger, and all my frustration Saturday night. Now, what what kind of feather would it be in your cap if uh, you know you were the guy who who ended Vampiro's career? Oh, you know what? It, it, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna use Vampiro as a stepping stone, you know, to to up my career to the next level, and that's what I'm using him for. That's what I, that's what I that's why I challenged him in this match, you know, because he thinks he's just gonna waltz through me, you know, and, and he thinks, you know, who's this kid? Who's this punk? I've been all around the world. I, I've rocked every every wrestling federation, every wrestling company in the world, and you know what? Who's this punk chump coming at me, challenging me to a match? And you know what? I'm going to show him who this punk chump chaos is, you know, but you know what? I don't think, I don't think he's going to show up. I, I think he's thinking better of it. I think he's sitting at home listening to me and he's shaking in his boots and he's thinking better of it. And he's wishing that he trained and he, he ate his vitamins and he drank his milk and he watched his video. You know what? Because I think he's going to have another thing coming come XPW May 24th. Uh, we actually got a call uh, here on the line. Uh, who is this on the line? He's calling it from Mexico. It's Vampiro. Oh, Vampiro finally oh. made the show. I don't know if he. No, it. It, it, it's about time. It's about time. I've I've had to put. I've had to carry this this radio show. And where have you been? You see, you've got no respect for in your head. You've got no respect for me. You've got no respect for XPW. And you're just waltzing in an hour and a half late, like no big deal, because you're the big bad superstar, huh? Jerry. Uh, I don't even know where to begin with you. You know what? I, it was me who said to everybody that you were the one who had a shot. It was me who said to you that you got it. It was me who was always looking out for you. Then you fuck with me. I put you in my movie. You changed my plane ticket. I wasn't going to get to go to my own premiere in Hollywood. Then I got to sit here. I got an email this morning. I'm sure, I think you still got your, your, your full-time job carrying Kevin Kleinrock's coffee to and from the office in his meeting room. I know you got into his email because it says right here, we'll call you. I've been sitting here waiting all night to get a phone call. I phoned Kevin. I said, like, Kevin, what's up? He said, you I see, that, that's number. your problem, Vampiro. Yeah, that's your problem. You are sitting there waiting. You are sitting there waiting for the next opportunity. <laughs> when you've got a guy like me that's hungry, and I'm going out there, and I'm going to get it. And that's what I'm going to do to you. I'm going out there, and I'm going to take you down. You think you're the big dog? Well, you know what? Chaos is going to take down the big dog. Listen, man. I, you, you, you're tripping me out. You're, you're a young kid, and I, I don't know what's wrong with you. And, and, and you're, doing the, you're not doing the right thing here. You sent me some bullshit email today saying it was Kevin that you were going to call me. I'm sitting here like a fool. You're sitting here shooting your mouth off. Listen to me, Joey. I don't do wrestling anymore. You know what I mean? I got other things going on in my life. But Kevin said, hey, what do you think of this? And I said, I, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, I, I'm starting to hear these rumors that you're saying that I'm a fool to you, that all this and that, that I'm, I, I don't got no respect, all this bullshit, you think I'm the big dog brother. I'm the one who don't give a fuck about any of that. I'm sitting here at home, and I'm specifically coming back to Westman. I don't want to come back. I'm specifically coming back, coming all the way to L.A. to shut your big mouth because you're, you're ungrateful. You're a spoiled brat. You've never gotten out of independent wrestling in California, and you never will. You don't got it. You don't draw people. You don't draw money. You ain't shit. And it ain't my fault that you didn't make it. I did everything I could to help you out. And yeah, it's me who's been everywhere. Yep, it's me who's been on top in every promotion in the world. Yep, it's me who beat all the superstars. Bro, that ain't my problem that you ain't got it. And all of a sudden you're saying you're going to be the one to take me out of wrestling. Joey, I'm out of wrestling. But I'm coming back specifically to beat your ass and, and beat it good and shut your mouth once and for all, put you in your place, let you wash dishes, let you answer the phone for Kevin. Let you do what you got to do, but back the fuck off. Shut your mouth. We're going to respect you elders. Respect the generation that was before you. And maybe one day, the next time I come back to LA, you ain't doing nothing. 
He had me more than welcome to carry my bag from my car to the dressing room. Not a problem. See, but that, that's, that's what you're all about. That you're, you know, you're about excuses. You're about making excuses that you're waiting for an email or you're waiting for a phone call or you know, that you're retired. Well, you know what? You know what? You've been out of wrestling. Well, I'm coming at you now. You made it before. You know, put the nail in the coffin. My win. Say, for what? Of what? Listen, that, that whole cliche of you getting off more than you can chill. Look, man, I ain't got nothing against you until now. But, hey, I'm telling you now, you got three or four days to think about this. Bro, call Kevin. Tell him that you woke up, you smell the coffee. You know what's good for you. You don't want to do it because you know you're going to go home hurt that night. It, it ain't worth it. You, you sound uh, like a man. You it. sound like a man that's backpedaling in his shoes. You sound like a man that doesn't want to step in the ring with me because you hear all the emotion. You can feel my electricity. You can feel the emotion over the phone. And you know what? You're right. going to feel even more come Saturday night. And I think you're backing out. I think you want me to step back. I think you want me to make the call to Kevin Kleinrock and say, you know what? I don't got any beef with Dan Pirro and I don't want him anymore you know put me in another match well you know that's not going to happen why don't you make the call why don't you say kevin i don't got it no or you know what better yet on in your head tonight why don't you tell me chaos you know what don't no no tell me joey you know what i don't have it anymore i ain't got it in me no more and you know what you're the better man and you know what i'm going to step down if that's what you're saying why don't you say it right now you know what after 25 years i've dealt with 10 million idiots just like you. And, and I'm trying to do you a favor. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to hook you up. Well, you, you don't want to do this. I don't need to call Kevin. I don't need to call anybody, brother. People call me. That's a big difference between me and you. I don't call people looking for work. Ow. That hurt, didn't it? Am I getting in your head, Joey? Chaos? Oh, no. You know what? That, that, that's all what it's about. That's what you're about. You're the big, bad guy that doesn't need to do anything. You have every opportunity coming your way. Well, you know what? I got something coming your way. I got something coming your way. But Tasso is right there. Punishment. XPW. Cold day in hell. This Saturday. Do you got the balls to show up, Bam? Do you have the balls to show up? Are you, are you going to make excuses that you didn't, you didn't have the plane ticket? It wasn't there. Or are you going to make excuses? that my limo didn't show up to pick me up? Are you going to make excuses that, that I didn't get the right hotel room that I wanted? It was not close enough to the venue. Are you, are, 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 that's what you're all about, you know? I think that's, that's all you're about. You're about the big, bad superstar that's going to come out in this limo, and he's going to be this big, bad guy, and he's going to come in, do his three-minute work, and put me, put me down. But that's not what's going to happen. You know, that's not what's going to happen. You say you haven't wrestled in three years, so why did you accept my challenge? You know, because you know you're in the wrong, and you know you know what you're going to do is right, and you're going to give me a chance to put you on your back, to teach you some respect, and to give you some punishment. No, a vampire... Is that it? That, that's all he's got. That's it. That's it. He doesn't want to hear anymore, does he? Is, is, is Joey done? I went to the bathroom. Oh, see, see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's the respect that I'm talking about. You know, you know, that's the respect that I'm talking about. You know, you never have the time of day. You never have the time of day, you know, for a nobody like me. You know what? But let me tell you something. Someday, this nobody is going to be somebody, and I'm, you're just going to know exactly, exactly who I am. Damn, God, what, what, the, what happened to you, bro? It was me who gave you a job. It was me who gave you a shot. What the? F hey, Jerry, listen. We go back a long way. Don't even go there about respect. Look, man, if anything, you of all people should know through hanging out with me, bro, that whole same thing, I never gave a shit about it once. Me, it's always been about the fans, brother. Don't talk to me about respect. Jerry, listen. You're, you're a young gun, you're hungry, and you really want it. But listen to me. And listen, understand, absorb the concept. Bro, it fucking ain't going to happen, man. Me and you are night and day, dog. It doesn't got nothing to do with me being a big superstar. That's all bullshit. It doesn't got nothing to do with me rocking the house, dog. It's just the way it is. And, and, and you cannot hang. I'm sure you're going to pull up a fight. I'm sure you're going to be a boy's fault. 
But look, motherfucker, I just want to break your neck. So it don't really matter to me what you do. You come or go. It's, it's, it's over for you. Look, it's Wednesday night. Call Kevin. Tell him, hey, I can't do it. Look, I, I've, I've beat your ass on many a night. I, I've put you in your place. I've hurt you. I've humiliated you. And, and the only thing you do is bitch and complain. You've got no emotion in your voice. You say you got out, bro, you're putting me to sleep here. Fuck. I mean, if it's going to happen, let's go. I'll be with a mile. You want to be a big shot? I don't need to go to the show side of it. You want to do it? Let's do the mile. You, you got the bag, hey, Joey. You know what? We, you know what? Yeah, we, you know what? We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait. But you know what? Everyone, everybody, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity. I'm not going to do it your way. And you know what? Do it in the parking lot or in the backyard like you would prefer. I'm going to give everyone a chance. You know, everybody, every fan in that arena, I'm going to give them a chance to see, to witness chaos, put the nail on the coffin with no pun intended. And put you out of wrestling and keep you out of wrestling because you say you're out of wrestling. So what are you doing on the show? I, I'm here because I thought that there was something that, that that I could do. So maybe I did something wrong. You're, you're pissed off. Maybe there was a miscommunication. You're, I've known you for years. I thought, hey, I could call in and maybe we could straighten this out. Being a man, showing respect. Calling in the young guy, the next generation, saying, "Hey, you know what? Whatever I do, you, 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 you sit there and you talk about respect. You talk about respect. There's no man in the That's wrestling right, business that I respect more than you. You know, you have the balls to go from Thunder Bay, Canada, to Mexico, to a country that you know nothing about, and make a name for yourself. But you know what? You crossed the line. You crossed the line when you disrespected me, and I don't want to hear you anymore. All I want you to do is just to bring it Saturday night, XPW, Cold Day in Hell." May 24th, just bring it. Wow. Oh, we lost uh, Chaos. We still got Vampiro here on the line. Um, now, do you see anything like it in Chaos, like uh, maybe kind of like yourself at that age, like the hungry guy wanting to you know prove yourself against a veteran, someone you looked up to? No. Not at all, man. I, 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 what a fucking idiot. I mean... Well, um, I don't know, man. You know what I mean? I always uh, showed respect. I always did my thing. I, I, you know, I was brought up in the old school. So, I, you know, I, 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 I understand. It would be really cool, you know, to do to do the match and, and you know, give the young guy a shot, and put him in the spotlight. But you know, attacking me personally and you know, messing up my plane tickets and sending me bogus emails and, and then talking shit and all that kind of stuff when, you know what I'm saying, you know nothing about me, you, you know, and you can't compare. Uh, what, what, <laughs> I don't know what to say, dude, you know what I mean? I got no ego, and, and, and you guys should know, you've known me for years. I, I, I've always been the quiet one, the cool one, the one who's never really, you know, mm -hmm. played the game. And, and now I got this, 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 this kid who I've tried to help out. You know, in XPW before, and, you know, and obviously in WSS, I really went out of my way to make sure that Joey had a shot. Brought him down to Mexico, put him in my promotion, put him on top, put him in my movie. It's like, damn, you know what I mean? What, what, how do you expect I'm going to react to all this? Uh, it's something that just caught me off guard. Kevin was telling me about it. He said, hey, check it out on YouTube, do this, do that. Uh, he said this radio interview, all this kind of stuff, and I, I didn't believe it. Because, uh, you know, in, in wrestling, it's really, really hard to make friends. It's really, really hard to get somebody to pay attention to you. You know what I mean? To get one of the vets to, uh, to, to try to give you that raw with some advice or some guidance. You know, and I really took Joey under my wing for a long, long time. And, and now, I, I mean, I got a lot of things to do. You know what I mean? I'm a busy guy. I'm the president of the Guardian Angels in all of Latin America. I mean, I'm on the street every day with, with you know, high-level drug dealer, crooked cops, fighting gangbangers. I mean, my life has changed. I'm a different person. I got a lot of serious things going on. You know, uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the federal police force here. I, you know, I'm, I'm in a, a crash unit that, that deals with prison riots. I ain't fucking around. You know, I, I got serious things going on in my life. Now I got this fucking guy. Driving me nuts is going to make me come all the way up to Mexico on my on a weekend, and uh, you know just just because he's got an attitude, he's pissed off, and he's not going anywhere, and that's my fault. 
fuck. So, you know, I'll be there. Don't even sweat it. And uh, I hope the jelly uh, is ready to rock because, you know, when we are dry, the only thing I'm coming to do is, is, is knock them out. Do you think sometimes people like him or, uh, you know, some other guys, they might blame, like, all their problems on, um, you know, like, on veterans or, you know, somebody else's, it's always someone else's fault? I don't know, man. You, you, you know what I mean? I just think it's selfish. That, you know, Western's a tough world. It's a tough life. You know, not everybody makes it. And it doesn't got nothing to do with your talent. And it doesn't got nothing to do with if a vet helped you out or not. If the people don't believe in you, you ain't going nowhere. And the people have never, ever, ever believed in Joey Chaos. They never will. He just ain't got it. And, and that's got nothing to do with me. That ain't my fault. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, when you say something like that, do you think you know he could take that as you being arrogant? Maybe. But, uh, brother, it's not like, hey, I'm the first guy to say that I'm not a great wrestler. I don't know anything about wrestling. I mean, I can get in there and rock and roll, and we can fight. Yeah, sure. And I got a certain kind of charisma that's connected with the fans over the years. But if you ask me to give you any names of any wrestling cards, I'm the first one to tell you. I've never learned. It's just not my thing. I don't know why I've clicked with the fans, and I certainly try to do my best. So arrogance, no, nah, bro. What's wrong with you? Now, have you? Would you say that's the most important thing? You know, to really make in wrestling is to have uh, the charisma and the connection with the crowd. You know, even if you yeah, could do like it's not it's not just wrestling, it's anything in the world. If you don't connect with the fans, you ain't going nowhere because the fans are the ones who make and break you, period. If you don't give it all you got, if you're not in there ready to bleed and, and, and break and then bleed some more, the fans see it, they know it, they see it, they call it and, and they ain't gonna buy you. Period. In anything. And that motherfucker just don't do it. Let everybody know it's a XPW, it's a cold day in hell. It's this Saturday. It's in Aviation Park, Redondo Beach, California. You can check out the XPW.com. There's also a link right on our website over at InYourHeadOnline.com. And uh, you mentioned, you know, you've, you've joined the Guardian Angels. You haven't wrestled in like uh, two or three years now. W why did you decide to, uh, to come back to wrestling? Well, uh, it's been something that's floating around in my mind for a long time because, because of the Guardian Angels' popularity here in Mexico. You know, a lot of people see me on the streets and, and everybody's asking why I don't wrestle anymore. So for me, it's, it was a logical decision to get back on national television as a Guardian Angel in my uh wrestling world uh because I've been on T V for twenty years down here and, and it's it just doesn't make sense not to try to use that to help get publicity for the Angels. So, you know, it's been a decision that's been in the works for over a year. I've been contemplating yes, no, I, I don't really want to do it anymore. Um I think that my time has come. I've done what I had to do. I've left a, an interesting legacy whether you like me or you don't. I I've done my best. You know, I've got some serious injuries. And uh, so I've been kind of playing with the idea. And then, you know, I got the call from, from uh, the XPW people. And I said, are you interested? And I said, I, you know, I, I really don't know. But then what really motivated me was, was you know, uh, was this, this kid. Uh, you know, he's pissed me off. But whether he's got it or not, you know, we'll find out. You know, and, it's, and it kind of caught my attention because... Uh, you know, it is what it is, and, 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 and if this kid's sole motivation is just to beat me, well, that obviously means that in some shape or form, I was obviously an influence to him at one point in time, and, and if, he's my, if I'm his idol, you know, what can I tell you? I, I guess I should be there. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what made you, uh, you know, join the Guardian Angels? Uh, like, was there a specific incident that led you to, like, go down that path? Yeah, I mean, I've been a fan of theirs for over 20 years, and I remember seeing them when they first started in New York, and and uh, I just thought to myself, you know, social responsibility, what can I do with the fame and name that I've created over the last 20 years? How can I give back to the community that made me? And uh, speaking of respect, I mean, you know, my country is in chaos, pardon the pun, but we're in a civil war now. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, you know, i got a seven-year-old daughter that I'm trying to raise, you know, I, I got influence and access to millions of people, so, so so why not try to do the right thing? 
and uh, you know my my life was not easy, and I, I've come out on top, and, and and I think I got a lot to give back. So that was that was the principal mm-hmm. motivating this factor in the decision. You mentioned about like uh, a lot of injuries. I know when we had RVD on, he said he thought it was a myth when people say like uh, when you take time off that you actually feel better because he said he actually felt worse like the longer he was out of wrestling. Uh, what what do you what do you think? Uh, did your he, like injuries heal? After you were out, or did uh, did you feel more? Dame, dame cinco minutos. Estoy en en una entrevista en vivo. Hablo en cinco minutos. Sorry, it's my daughter calling me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, about that. No, no, dude, no. Uh, listen, man. Yeah, since I've been out of it, it was real, it was real heavy, you know, because I put a lot into it emotionally over over twenty five years, you know. So mm-hmm. it was a huge part of my existence. Uh, you know, physically, as soon as I stopped, my my body ached and ached and ached, and I just felt that uh, I got old. You know, physically, overnight, you know, if you're in there bumping around and rocking and rolling. Oh, man. Uh, we got a caller here. Do you, uh, do you want us to go to break or anything? No, nah, dude. Sorry, just give me one second. Man. Yeah, no problem. Uh, celebrate no, it's XPW Cold Day in Hell. This is Saturday, May 24th, Aviation Park, Redondo Beach, California. Check out DXPW.com. Check out BBD. No problem. Let's give him a plug down here for the cold day in hell. We uh, we got Vampiro back in the line. We got a caller on the line. We got Dwayne. What's up? You got a question for Vampiro? Yeah. uh, Did you get along with Vince Russo and WCW? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, caller, could you uh, turn down your, if you if you got the show playing? Could you uh, turn it off? Turn it off. Because uh, we're getting the feedback. Oh, we're getting the feedback. Uh, caller with six four six area code. Who are you? You got a question? Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, you're. I'm wondering if maybe their <laughs> yeah. entire goal was screwing up the show. <laughs> now you said you didn't get along with Vince Russo. What like specifically? Do you didn't like. Uh, the way he was using you in, in WCW, or you didn't like his ideas? Uh, I, I was just really frustrated at the whole WCW experience because I had so much more to give, and I felt like I was at the height of my career, and uh, they just didn't give me a chance out of jealousy and egos and people in the dressing room trying to block it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I never thought I was a great wrestler, but I was a hell of a performer, and I had so much energy and so much motivation. I really thought I was going to get a shot. And that one time I did, and they stopped it, and I still kept going. And, the, you know, it wasn't until I broke my neck that they really uh, kind of pushed me, you know, away. But uh, I really had so much more to give. And they kept, you know, Vince Russo just kept trying to make me do stupid things. And, uh, you know, I just didn't want to do it. Was that, like you said, frustrating? Because you are in, like, uh, you having a feud with Sting is, like, you know, one of the main guys, but then they're having matches where the like the Human Torch match. Um, I didn't listen. I, I learned I learned an awful lot from just being around Sting, mm-hmm. and I mean that in all sincerity. You know, he's he's a pro. You know, he made it, and he was you know he was, he was an important figure in that company for a long time. But he had an attitude, and he was a real egomaniac, and he he, he was real jealous, and and. Uh, like I said, man, that's, that's not my fault. You know, and I thought the anger was great. I didn't understand a lot of it. I really tried right. my best. But uh, I guess the people dug it for a certain period of time, right, you know? Yeah. I don't know what to say, you know. The human's torch match, I, 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 I don't know. I didn't really... Well, you know, what can I say? It was something that, that was never done before, and people remember it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just felt like I had a lot more to give. Mm-hmm. Well, so some of the stuff I liked, I liked like your the Deadpool group. Uh, I just never understood like why that didn't last longer. What Deadpool? Well, wasn't there a group called the Deadpool you were in? I don't know. Was I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there was a lot of little different groups you were in. It was that. It was a. It was uh, one time we were at the ICP. That one didn't last too long either. But uh, we got a caller. We yeah. got El Santo. Que pasa, vampiro? Who's that? This is uh, Santo. Not not El Santo from Mexico, but he's one of our callers. He's uh, El Santo. Okay. Hey, vampiro. How you doing, man? What's up, man? Hello. Look, I enjoyed your work. 
I judge your work, man, in WCW, even though they didn't treat you right, you know, the way they treated you. But uh, I often, I often judge your work, man, when you was in uh, in, in Mexico at CML and Triple A. Um, you ever think about maybe going back over there, maybe to Triple A? Did Conan ever talk to you about going over there? Because I'd love to see you go over there and uh, and go against Conan's group over there, you know? You'd be great for the storyline. Well, Conan really doesn't have a lot of say in, in what goes on in AAA, contrary to popular belief. But uh, okay. I, uh, I I actually started in AAA two weeks ago. So I'm back, brother. No, okay, because we have a delay here, you know, in Galavision here in the States. Yeah, so. I, yeah I'm aware of that, but uh, I can assure you uh, it's, it, it's, it's getting over really well. Uh, I'm taking my time. I'm just making appearances. Uh, I'm making uh-huh. sure that everybody knows that I'm not trying to steal the spotlight. I'm not interested in that. I'm trying to raise awareness for, for you know, the Guardian Angels and, and try to get things done in the community. And uh, I got a feud coming up. My first match is in Triple Mania, July 13th, versus Ricky Banderas in a hardcore match. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, that's great, man. I can't, wa- I can't wait to watch it on TV again, man. That's great. Okay, can I ask I one more question? That. Can I ask uh, one that? more question? Can yeah, I ask man. one more? Um, how, how is it working with uh, with Dr. Wagner? I've seen you uh, on TV a lot, and, you know, wrestling is Dr. Wagner. How, how is he in the ring with, you know? Um, he's kind of up and down, you know what I mean? We're, we've been good friends for over 20 years, and I think he's phenomenal. And in the last five or six years, he's kind of come into himself. You know, he's developed his own style. But... Uh, you know, he's, he's, you know, he does what he wants to do. He marches to the beat of his own drummer. And, uh, right. you know, he's just, uh, he's kind of a dick sometimes, but, but I guess he's okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much, man. And can't wait to see you on the back on the tube again. All right, brother. Thanks for calling All in, right, man. Gotcha. Uh, you, you brought up Ricky Banderas. Uh, what did you think about like uh, your feud with him in uh, Wrestling Society X? I thought it was phenomenal. Um, everybody asks the question, what was your favorite series or your toughest opponent or your favorite experience in the ring? And, uh, my eight or nine year history of feuding and being a tag team partner of Ricky Banderas uh, in Puerto Rico and in the States here in Mexico uh, was my favorite. Um, we, we clicked, and uh, there, were, there were great matches for that style. We had a certain intensity between us, and, you know, it was, it was great. I've never had that with any other worker that I've worked with, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it was my favorite. So I'm really looking forward to it, see what happens. Did you like, like, uh, some, like, the post-editing they did in, the, in Wrestling Society X? They kind of uh, added in, like, special effects? Oh, did they? Yeah. Well, maybe you never saw the show, so you wouldn't know. No, I I, I didn't even know it was on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Fuck. <laughs> we, we, you know what? We didn't. Uh, this is it, it, it's the honest to God truth. Um, no, we, MTV never put Wrestling Society X here until a year later, and no one even knew about it. So right. I, I never really got to see it. And, and, you know, Kevin's a cheap motherfucker and he never ever sent me the DVD, so, <laughs> um, I, I never, I never got to see the, 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 the pride and joy of my best work that I've ever done behind the scenes and in the ring. Uh, I never even got to see it because, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it, there wasn't enough in the budget to, to ship me a copy. Well, maybe I'll, I'll hook you up afterwards. I'll, I'll send you a copy. Oh, you, you, could you help me out, pal? Yeah, I'll help out Vampire, the copy of Wrestling Society X. Yeah, you, the first you give me a discount at your show? <laughs> yeah, only five bucks. Half oh, price. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you got Andre yeah. here on the... What was that? I, no, but, you know, I, I did in the pilot, obviously. I saw the pilot, and I thought... Yeah. I thought it was great. I mean, it's a television show. Mm-hmm. It, it was what it was, and... and you know, the the effects uh, made it interesting. You know what I mean? Everybody's trying to find the next big thing in sports entertainment. And I thought that was, it was awesome. I thought it was phenomenal. And those kids, the team, the group we had, uh, the talent, it was, it was, it was probably the greatest time of my life to see those 
young guys out there doing what they can and uh, really going for it and having faith and just having fun. And uh, it, it, it was the best time I've had in wrestling. Uh, we got Andre here on the line. Made him on hold here for a little while. You got a question? So, um, when you was in WCW, did you um, want to come to the WWL? And was there any negotiation between you and Vince at that time? No, not at all. Actually, uh, they they said to me that they didn't think I had any talent, and there was there was nothing that they could do with my character. It wasn't uh, something they could sell. The people wouldn't buy it. So that was that conversation. And I, I would have never gone there in a million years, and I, I I would never go there under any circumstances. I would never sell my soul to the devil. And uh, you know they would want to take complete control of my name and all that stuff. And after 20 years of of enjoying what I've done in front of the most amazing people, you know, the fans that have come out to see me. I, I, I don't think that, you know, fuck those guys. So, no, I wouldn't go. Well, thanks for calling in, Andre. Uh, so, you got Jason here on the line. Hey. What's up? Uh, not much. I wanted, I wanted to ask, uh, when you when you worked in WCW, and, and particularly in, in the 2000, you worked with, with Sting and, and Great Muda, and, those guys are held to a pretty high standard. What was it like working with them, knowing that you also, you know, had very much international wrestling experience? Uh, what did you learn from them, and and what did, in the same way, you kind of share with them? Well, like I said, I learned a lot of things from Sting. Uh, I can't really pinpoint what they were, but I think it was maturity, and 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 it's weird to say it like that. Just being around somebody like him who who survived for so long in that territory, which was a real tough place to crack into, uh, which we all know was the downfall of WCW. Um, I learned a lot from him that way, but with Muda, Muda was my idol. Muda was the one I emulated probably my whole life as a wrestler. Um, I, I, it's hard to say what I learned from him. Just being around him, I was starstruck, you know what I mean? We were partners. We worked against each other. I, I watch one match of mine every now and then. It was a singles match against the Great Muda, and we, I was mirroring his moves. And um, to see it now, you know, I was really, really a, a fan of his. And um, he was one of the first heavyweights that was so agile, and he was the first one who had two characters at the same time. And I thought it was just a phenomenal concept, and I tried to copy everything I could from him. And now, you know, we're partners in all Japan and all that kind of stuff, but back in the day when it first happened, when I first met him, I was just completely blown away. I, I think he's a great man, and uh, I think he's one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. Mm -hmm. You said about being agile and stuff. Um, you know, everyone, all right, everyone does moonsaults and all kinds of flips now, but when he was doing it, it was like, the first guy you ever you ever seen doing like the the moon salt, and it was like it was really special to see. It was, and it still is. You mm -hmm. see it now, and it means absolutely nothing. They do all these guys do these four hundred and eighties and six hundred and seventies or whatever the fuck they're called. And they light their balls on fire and they do backflips out of the <laughs> ring and they land on their nose and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it means absolutely nothing. When Luger did it, it was to win a match, mm -hmm. and it meant everything. You know, when, when he said it, he, he did the backbreaker and he went over to the ropes and people stood up in the arena. And, and they were like, oh my God, here it is. And it was just, it was just jaw dropping at, at the time. And it still is. If you watch it now, yeah. there's nobody who, who, who can pull that out like he did. Mm -hmm. I would say it's kind of like, um, everyone remembers, uh, the Superfly splash, but, you know, every time he did it, he, he won the match, you know, Jimmy Snooker. Yeah, well, I mean, you're supposed to do your big move to win a match. That's the whole point of having a big move, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Now, uh, all, 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 these, all these young kids just do all this stuff that means absolutely fucking nothing. Did so, you have anything? It, 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 it's tough. Did you have anything else, Jason? Uh, I just wanted to add that um, in the early days of TNA, when, when Vampire and Raven were going to see you, that was a bit of a dream feud for me, so I just wanted to, to, sit, to let Vampire know that. Oh, thank you. It was a dream feud for me, too, uh, but it never really had it. I was supposed to go to ECW way back when and, and feud with Raven, uh, even way before I went to WCW, and I was so geeked on the whole thing. But when I finally got to, to TNA, and it was 
it was so real, Billy. And, and I was supposed to be this, this secret character. And they gave me a fucking pillowcase with these eyes cut out. I looked like a Ku Klux Klan member. And I was supposed to be this, this, this phantom character. And, you know, Shane Douglas was in the ring and he, he puked his fucking guts out and they were rolling around in it. And the other one had diarrhea. And I was like, man, what the fuck am I doing here? I tried to get out of those fast as I could. There was one spot, one of those matches, like the it was like the Gallows match, I think it was, and I think it was you had all the chains around your neck, like uh, from each yeah. of the four corners, and that always uh-huh. to me looked like uh, like a scene from uh, Bride of Frankenstein when Frankenstein's like chained to the uh, the chair. I don't know if that was done like uh, if you had that in mind or if it just uh, reminded me of that. You're a weirdo. I'm just <laughs> I'm just bizarre, I guess. Well, thanks for calling in, Jason. <laughs> Uh, did you get a question from the board, Incher? Uh, yeah, P.O.D. from our message board. He wants to know, do you think Norman Smiley is an underrated technical wrestler? What? <laughs> uh, he wanted to know if you thought Norman Smiley was an underrated wrestler. Of course. Of course he was underrated. He's a phenomenal wrestler, but he's just... He's, he's, uh... He's too white to be a black guy, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense, but he's my best friend. Or he just, fuck, I don't know, dude. He's like that brother on uh, Fresh Prince, you know, the, the, the black dude who was like a nerd. Right. He used to be like a, a butt pal of Michael Jackson when he was a little boy. Yeah, that's Norman Smiley. <laughs> Donnie Noel Soul Simmons from, uh, uh, what was that movie? You probably don't know it. There. You'll probably just think I'm bizarre again. But anyway, uh, Barbie, do you got a question? Uh, Job's from the message board. He wants to know, uh, did you enjoy working with the Misfits? Yeah, of course, man. Come on. 100%. I'm, I'm still in contact with all those guys every day. Hmm. I just talked to Michael Graves today. Hey, let me ask you guys a question. Do you really think that, that, that girl Lisa is, is Russian? <laughs> Lisa, uh, she calls herself Vampira now. She's on our uh, MySpace page. No, no, I think she, uh, I think she's probably Russian. How can we prove I'm, it? I'm I'm kind of skeptical because it says she's 19, but those pictures are not of a 19-year-old. That's like a, I don't know, a 35-year-old woman who's had a facelift picture. So I'm kind ah. of confused. She said, dude, she says she's 19, and and she no, she, 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 she she's 19 and she's she's studying in a in a in a beauty school in in St. Petersburg. But if you look at her photos, she looks like a fucking model. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just think I'm getting set up, and I'm going to end up getting chained up on the four corners like that Frankenstein match and having strange things <laughs> inserted into my body by a, a Russian man, and I'm not into it. Oh, man. Well, well if you, maybe we could see that DVD on uh, bvd.com, Big Vision Entertainment. Yeah. I love that DVD. Yeah, I'm sure Big Vision will put that one out in early. No, you know, if you had Chaos on early, what were you, what are your thoughts on Chaos like before, uh, before this uh-huh. match, was he uh, chaos? Was he somebody you specifically, you know, wanted to wrestle? No, man, I don't want to wrestle anymore. But uh, now he's got me, my he's got me all, all worked up. So you know, no, man, no. I, listen, I don't even know who Joey Chaos is. I mean, I tried to help out a kid, and, and that was it. So, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not feeling it, brother. Are you? Did you read uh, Chris Jericho's book? No, I heard about it though. I heard he had something nice to say about me. Yeah, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't very positive on. You. Did you have any? Uh, was that a surprise to you, or did you not get along with him? I guess I didn't. I don't even know what he said in the book. What did he say? Um, he just said like uh, you were like two faced. I'm what? He said like you you were two faced uh, to him like in Mexico and I think Japan, maybe even Germany. Wow. No, dude, I, I I couldn't tell you. I mean, you know, I guess he's got issues, right? What can I say? Right. Uh, anything else from message board? Uh, yes, uh, El Santo. He wants to know who, uh, which Mexican wrestler is your favorite to work with? Vampiro. <laughs> okay. He's the only one that's any good. He's the only one that's any good. All the other ones suck. <laughs> <laughs> they mentioned the Misfits. How about the ICP? Uh, which was like uh, better to work with, ICP or the Misfits? ICP, for sure. 
Now, uh, what is it like to wrestle? You know, uh, for, for their their promotion. Phenomenal! It's like a good time. It's, it's, yeah, it's a really good time. I, are you surprised? Like TNA doesn't use them more. They were there, like you know, once or twice, and like uh, uh, I'm it was more just like a huge TNA like... even around. You're <laughs> <laughs> here to you, that. Yeah. Uh, do you ever do you watch TNA? Do you watch a product at all? Nope. And, and no chance of uh, ever seeing Vampiro back in TNA? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, nope. fuck TNA. What about the six-sided ring? One of our fans actually asked about I'd like to bang the owner, though. What? Uh, the six-sided ring. <laughs> what about it? Uh, like do you, you think it's a good idea? I'd bang, I'd bang the owner of TNA in the six-sided ring in a heartbeat. <laughs> I hope you don't mean Jeff. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you said, said I hope, hope you, you don't mean Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I believe he'd be Come referring on, to Nick. How many? How many? How many guys you got in that studio sharing one mic? What the fuck's wrong? We got we got three of us here. We got a uh, Jack, Barbie, and Incher. You know, Chaos actually knew all three of us. Yeah. Well, he got coffee for everybody around that place, didn't he? <laughs> Are you going to be part of the um, the big show in Spain where it's uh, the return of the Ultimate Warrior? I was about to, and I can officially say no. You think that'll uh, that'll get over well? Sure. <laughs> now, there's another guy with face paint. Uh, any? Uh, would you like to work with uh, the Warrior at any time? No, no, dude, not at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was hoping you weren't going to say Kamala. No, uh, no, no, dude. Kamala has no, a good like album out if you ever listen to it. No, that, that's good. I'll, I'll, I'll pass. All right, well, everybody, check out the XPW dot com. Cold day in hell. It's a Saturday, Aviation Park, Renato Beach, California. Uh, now you're going to be part of the fan fest because there's a fan fest before the show from five thirty to seven thirty where people can get autographs and uh, pictures. Are you going to be part of that yes, or I will. wrestling? Yes, I will be there one hundred percent. Do you enjoy that? Uh, you know, like meeting the fans, talking to them. No, not, not at all. <laughs> I'm being forced to do it. So you're going to be chained down. So if you want to get a picture with you while you're yeah. chained down. No, of course, I, of course, I like meeting the fans. Yeah, it's it's a great experience, and I, I like to say hello to everybody. Right. There's also going to be the Miss Extreme, which is is uh, after the Fan Fest, and then the big show at eight. Uh, anything you want to tell, like all your fans out there, why they should come to the show? Nope. All right. Well, everybody, just go to the show. You can see Vampiro. Yeah, no, don't 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 do that. Say, say see Vampiro. Come on, see the show. I mean, Big Vision and. You know, the FPW family is, is really putting a lot into this. There's a lot of nostalgia. It means a lot to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of familiar faces. You know, it's, it's, it's for us, it's, you know, it's a brotherhood. And it's good to be back together after all these years. And, and we're, we're really behind it and really motivated to give the fans a good show. And I hope that, that people come out and dig it. You know what I mean? Not just to see me and Mr. Coffee Boy, but to come out and see the whole show. Mm-hmm. And enjoy it. You know what I mean. We're doing it for the fans, and, and uh, I'm, I'm honored and privileged and real humbled by the invitation. And I really hope that I can do my part, and the people dig my work, and and we're really looking forward to it. You know what I mean. Wrestling's a tough world, a tough business, but you know, after all these years, SPW is back, and, and it's just a it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and you're gonna get your money's worth. And uh, you know, just come and enjoy, and have fun, take it for what it is. You know what I mean. It's for you, so you know, come on out. Now, the original XPW, did you enjoy your time there? Did you get along with uh, Rob Black? Yeah, I had a great experience, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, one of my best friendships in my life developed out of that, you know, with Kevin Kleinrock. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and everybody else has met us, you know what I mean? I was just I was just happy to be part of it. Now, if it does well, you know, and, and they decide to do, you know, another one, maybe once a year, or they decide to, you know, bring it back at a... Like a more regular basis, would would you be interested in being part of it? If they invite me, a hundred percent, of course. Mm-hmm. If the fans want to see me, as long as the fans want to see me, I'll always be around. Excellent. Well, we want to thank you for coming on tonight. Sorry, it was a little late. Yeah, I gotta go. All right. Can we keep you just for one second? No. 
Hey, this is Angel the Hardcore Homo. You listen to In Your Head. I'm going to give you some head radio. <laughs> Online. <laughs>